But what about America before colonization? While the focus of this class, for all intents and purposes, will be directed on the last 200 years of our shared inhabitation of this continent, of our place in America, it's important to recognize the peoples, the cultures, and civilizations that inhabited much, if not all, of North America for tens of thousands of years before the first European settlers dared dream of crossing the perilous seas and reaching the Americas. Pre-colonial North America is the period between the migration of the Paleo-Indians to the region between 40,000 and 14,000 years ago, and contact between indigenous tribes and European colonists in the 16th century, which eradicated much of the Native American culture and people, replacing it with what became Canada and the United States of America. Prior to the arrival of Europeans, the Native Americans lived as autonomous nations, also known as tribes, across much of the continent from present-day Alaska all across Canada and throughout the lower 48 United States. In order to study this era more easily, modern-day scholars have divided it into periods shown on the timeline to the right. Christopher Columbus initiated European colonization of the Americas in 1492 when he landed in the West Indies, and this encouraged efforts by the Dutch, French, and finally the English to establish colonies in North America, beginning in 1534 all the way through about 1620, which led to rapid colonization for the next 100 years. Nations and cultures across North America developed highly sophisticated social orders, built monumental urban centers, engaged in long distance trade and agriculture on a large scale, inventing irrigation systems, which still exist in parts of the United States in the present day. They can be seen in the Southwest, most notably in the area around Phoenix, Arizona. As more and more colonists arrived from Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries, Native Americans were steadily pushed onto reservations, losing the lands they had lived on for thousands of years to the steadily increasing hordes of European immigrants who would eventually regard themselves as the rightful owners of the lands formerly inhabited by the natives. Paleo Indians migrated from Asia to North America between 40,000 and 14,000 years ago. The earlier date is most likely more accurate based on the dispersion and development of the nations throughout North, Central, and South America. It is also thought that the people may have migrated by boats, hugging the coasts until they settle in areas such as modern day California. Mexico and points south, possibly at the same time others were migrating by land. The earliest culture identified is the Clovis, so named for the Clovis points first discovered in Clovis, New Mexico in 1929. These points were crafted stone spearheads used primarily in hunting game and once identified in New Mexico, were recognized in finds located across North America. Although it does seem there are earlier cultures than the Clovis, this designation is used to identify a widespread hunter-gatherer type culture that subsisted primarily on hunting so-called megafauna, or large animals like the great bison, the giant beaver, the mastodon, mammoth, saber-toothed tiger, and others. The Clovis peoples are thought to have followed the migration patterns of the big game until they came to primarily inhabit a particular region. At this point, they seem to have begun to engage in trade with other tribes. 
As the climate changed and more animals were hunted to extinction, larger game began to disappear and smaller game survived. At this point, the people began to gravitate toward permanent or semi-permanent settlements by lakes, streams, and rivers so they could harvest for fish. This change in patterns of living differentiates the earlier Clovis culture from the later Dalton Folsom culture, which, like Clovis, is so-called from the projectiles found primarily in the southwest near Folsom, California, and Midwest near Dalton, but identified in finds throughout most of America, dated between 8,500 and 7,900 BCE. The tips of the spears hurled by the altal, a carved stick with a cup at one end, which held the base end of a projectile to be thrown, are these Dalton Folsom points which give the culture its name. The altal is only one of the tools developed during this period. However, as the Dalton Folsom people are also characterized by the development of stone knives, scrapers, drills, and other tools, the points of the spears were resharpened after each hunt using a type of whetstone and the knives were crafted with serrated edges, quite sharp, for cutting meat from the animals and for cutting hides for clothing. This culture also shows the first signs of religious belief and an afterlife based on grave goods found at the sites dated to this period. Archaic period lasted from 8,000 BCE to 1,000 BCE and was signified by earth mounds. The earliest mounds date to the so-called Middle Archaic period around 5400 BCE, primarily in modern-day Louisiana, Mississippi, and surrounding states, and sometimes seem to have been religious or political centers for the surrounding community especially the Wachita Mound at Watson Break, the oldest mound complex in North America. During this period, permanent settlements were established and plants and some animals were domesticated. The dog was already domesticated by this time and, according to some scholars, traveled with the earliest arrivals from Asia. Depicted in the picture, is an artist's rendering of the Wachita Mound at Watson Break. The woodland period can be characterized in three distinctive periods. The early woodland period, the middle woodland period, and the late woodland period. When mound building continued and developed during all three woodland periods. The term which is usually associated with the eastern and middle regions of North America, but is equally applicable to the southwest and Great Plains and that similar advances in technology and social structure and permanent settlements were made across the continent. Ceramics became more refined as did craft work generally as evidenced by statuary, tools, and weapons. In the Southwest, nations like the Hohokam built cities and designed efficient irrigation systems. In Alaska, the Inuit developed stone lamps, large fish hooks, better knives, and harpoons. Toward the East, individual nations built mounds, not only as sacred places, but for burial and residential purposes, and each group engaged in long distance and local trade. The Native Americans observed the religious belief of animism, or the conviction that all things in nature are animated by a spirit, and all are interconnected, and so recognized that the unseen world was just as real and powerful as the one they walk through in their daily lives. 
This reciprocity took the form of personal and communal gestures of gratitude for the life of an animal taken or a tree cut down for lumber. A Mississippian culture is so called because the people primarily lived in the Mississippi River Valley, but they also established cities and villages in the Ohio River Valley, the Tennessee River Valley, and elsewhere ranging from the Northeast down to Louisiana and out again toward Indiana. The Mississippian culture's best known communities were the Adena culture and the Hopewell culture. The skill of the Adena and Hopewell in their ceramics, artworks, and technology such as irrigation ditches is impressive as is their apparent talent in farming and abilities in trade. Another nation considered distinct from both the Adena and Hopewell built the city of Cahokia in modern-day Illinois, the largest urban center in North America prior to the 18th century, which flourished between 650 BCE and 1350 CE, so for about 2,000 years. Cahokia was a grand city with a wide central plaza, shops, ball fields, a solar calendar, residences for the lower class, and others for the elite and long fields of corn and other crops. The Cahokians' cultivation of corn is one of the aspects separating them from the earlier cultures, which had not yet mastered this crop. Their corn cultivation was so successful, it not only fed the people of the city, but was used in local and long distance trade. Mississippian culture was still flourishing, although Cahokia had been abandoned, most likely due to overpopulation. When the Spanish conquistador Hernán de Soto arrived in the region in 1541, de Soto's small army came in search of gold. They had been informed could be found in abundance in America. As a result, De Soto and his men killed many natives they believed were hiding the vast treasure from them. The De Soto expedition also brought diseases the natives had no immunity from, which killed many more even after De Soto himself had died and his men had returned to the coast. The Spanish continued to make forays into the south and southwest regions in North America while the French were establishing themselves in Canada and throughout the Midwest of the present day United States, all the way down to Louisiana. The French also brought diseases that killed large numbers of natives, just as the English would do when they started arriving. The English first attempted colonization through the Roanoke colony in 1585 and again in 1587, both of which failed and then finally managed to succeed with the Jamestown colony of Virginia in 1607, which also would have failed if not for the intervention and assistance given by the native tribes of the Powhatan Confederacy. The English also attempted colonization of New England in 1607 through the Popham colony, which was also assisted at first by the natives until it failed. New England was first successfully colonized by the English in 1620 with the establishment of the Plymouth Colony, which also owed its survival again to the Native Americans, this time by the tribes of the Wampanoag Confederacy and other New England colonies developed quickly afterwards. As more Europeans arrived in the land of opportunity, they seized more and more native lands pushing the original inhabitants further and further into the interior of the country. The natives fought back in a series of wars from the Anglo-Poetan Wars of the 1600s to King Philip's War in 1665, and many others up through the 18th century and into the 19th century. But a lack of cohesion and unity on their part 
coupled with the seemingly unending supply of immigrants the English were able to send against them, eventually led to their defeat. By the late 19th century, most Native Americans were confined to reservations and the immigrants, having stolen their lands through treaties that were never honored, then settled into their new homes and named states, provinces, rivers, and parks after the people who had once owned everything. 